Alright, so this is the high project. It's a high altitude balloon for people who didn't know. Um, okay, so real quick, these are our goals for our project. Our goals are to collect meteor dust from heights of above 60,000 feet. The goal is to have a petri dish slide out of the actual container and then slide back in when it drops below 60,000 feet again. Uh, we also want to reach a final height of 120,000 feet. We don't know how we're going to do it yet, but we are going to plan. We're going to figure out like how much helium we're supposed to put in the balloon so that it doesn't pop too early or too late. Well, too late is better because that means it's higher. Um, we also want to record video. We want to be able to track it. We want to have its altitude, the air pressure of the area around it, and temperature. Yeah. Um, so by, we're going to also get the average velocity by getting the distance and the time it took. So that's how we're going to do that. And we're going to try to have a tether launch by July 11th. That's pretty much it. Well, the meter shower is uh, from August 10th to August 14th. So we're going to try to launch from like August 10th to August 12th. Uh, so yeah, we sh should be done by that. Yeah, exactly. So. So at the moment, we've just been testing everything that works from previous projects because last year it didn't work out so well. They got the balloon up there, but they didn't have any recordings or data from it. So right now we're just trying to make sure that all software, cameras, GPSs work everything. And then we need to get uh, a design going to actually collect meteor dust since that is the goal for this year. So you want to talk a little bit about how you fix the software? Oh, yeah. So um, the previous team, the 2016, actually, they made it work. And it was working with the different language. And then the uh, last year's team, they decided to move on to the Andrina boards. And uh, they started collecting some stuff around the internet, I guess. And it wasn't working properly. And they also uh, burned the break, one of the GPS breakouts, so and co uh, co uh, connected with the wrong cable. So we fixed that. So we know it's working, and we tested. And now uh, we just placed uh, a new breakouts and uh, um, the SD card shield. So we're gonna replace it, and we also changed it, uh, the the. Andrina boards into a custom board, so it will be much easier for us to, you know, write our own custom software. So, and yeah, and now we're looking to collaborate with the robotics team, so we can have the the, the motors we can, yeah, use right. Um, wait, aren't you gonna move to the next slide, or sorry? All right, so. Our current, all right. So our current design for the uh, automated petri dish is this sliding mechanism. So there is going to be a rectangular platform with a circular slot for the petri dish, which will be secured to it via Velcro. This allows for, well, this allows for, this allows for it to be uh, kept in place while also allowing for easy removal once the uh, care package is recovered. Alright, so the cover itself though is going to be operated via a rack and pinion, similar to the uh, similar to the arm for the uh, similar to the extending arm for the robotics project. So yeah, the idea is to the idea is to program it so that the uh, cover opens at, er at around 60,000 feet during the ascent, then close, then slides back, then slides back shut. At the uh, at sixty thousand feet on the de on the de on the descent, kind of start there for a moment. So yeah, the platform recover will all be three D printed. Well, will have to be three D printed, but the other components we either already own, or need to be ordered, or are being ordered as we speak. So now, unfortunately for the design and on account of the materials we have it. We have to hand, as well as the lack thereof, there is a bit of a risk of contaminating the sample. Hopefully, we should be able to resolve that issue um, as we progress throughout the altitude balloon project. Additionally, the motors we've currently been looking at may be a little too fast for the rack and pinion to work, so we might be able to alleviate the issue by just having them rotate in bursts or intervals. 
so like half rotation, like half rotation, pause, etc. This should maximize control over the cover so it doesn't go flying off back to Earth. <laughs> so this is what he meant by like, having a, it's going to be a rectangular shape. So it's, this, how do I explain it? So it's a rectangular piece and then it's going to be a circular hole for the actual Petri dish. So then our mechanism, the rack and pinion, which is right here, is going to, is going to push it out and half burst like he said, so that, because it's going to be way too fast, it's going to, slide that whole, the, the disc out in half, in an eighth of a second, that's too fast. So what we did was just have it in half burst, so yeah, we can get it out and it just doesn't fly out. Hopefully. Yeah. No. Hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully it works, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much. Cool. Yeah, uh, for the sterility part, Professor Griffo has pretty much given up on it, but like, we're gonna try to <laughs> figure something out for it. Um, at the moment, if there is no, completely sterile way of getting it up there. We're gonna have two control uh, Petri dishes. One that we keep on the ground, uh, at the same time we launch the balloon. Uh, and then one, once we get the Petri dish out and put the actual Petri dish lid on it. So that way we can see if there's anything, uh, so any like complications with it from the ground, like sterility. Yeah, so like we could tell what's to do, like what came from <laughs> the ground and what came from actual, the height that we opened the Petri dishes at. So yeah, that's pretty much what we have.